So what's the smallest amount of energy that this light could deliver? It could deliver 2.652 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So we've seen here the energy transfer here is quantized. It would seem like you could deliver any amount of energy, but actually you can only deliver energy in these small packets or in, in, in uh, multiples of that. Now, of course, these are so small that usually we don't notice the quantization. These are very small packets, so usually we don't notice the quantization. It seems like all the possible values. Oops. Oh, that's only part A, huh? All right. Okay, and the other thing we reviewed here was how to deal with the units. So you didn't have any trouble with the nanometers, but we had a little trouble with the kilowatts and the square centimeters. Um, those are issues that could easily come up. So since we're working with area, we're going to be working with squared units. So we have to know how to do the unit conversions for square units. It's always best to actually write down the unit conversion. Okay. because we've seen that big energy means a big frequency, but big frequency means a low wavelength. And they told us in the problem that the lowest wavelength in visible light was the 380 nanometers. So that would be 380 nanometers. Good. Because he told you to, right? Each one, each one really carries more energy than we did the minimum. Right. So it's really more. So the answer is. Now, careful. So yeah, so we decided that all, we were assuming all the light was 750 nanometers. But in reality, some of the light would have been lower wavelength. Yeah. Does that mean that some of the light would have had more energy per photon or less energy per photon? Uh, more, oh, more energy per photon. Right. Okay. So in reality, we were underestimating the energy per photon. Some of the light would have had more energy per photon. way to work that out is, was this number an overestimate or an underestimate? Um, it was an oh, underestimate. Yeah, because we were only looking at the biggest wavelength. In reality, if we had put in some smaller wavelengths, there would have been bigger energies. So this number here, well, let's see how can we phrase this in terms of the question. The question is, are there more or fewer? So let's say that we put in to be realistic, let's say that we put in some lower wavelengths. If we put in some lower wavelengths, this number would get bigger. But if this number gets bigger, what happens to our answer? All right, and that's the answer to the question. If we started taking into account that there are some lower wavelengths with more energy, we would be, we would be predicting fewer photons per second. So the answer to the question was? Yeah, fewer photons per second. And again, the reasoning is, in reality, a lot of the photons will be carrying more energy than this, and therefore we don't need as many to get the same power. Since a lot of the photons would be carrying more energy than this, we don't need as many photons to get this 0.16 watts over here. OK. All right, I think that's a good typical type of test question. Uh, and of course, this is a lot easier if we lay out the flowchart out front. So you want to keep this in your notes and keep this flowchart in your notes. We've already gone through parts of this flowchart before, but you can see how you can apply this to questions. 
I don't know if we ever quite tied these ideas to intensity over here. So uh, intensity is a key new concept um, that uh, you're likely to see on the test.